there's a growing community online of people who claim they're being stalked and harassed by an organized collective of what seems like regular people of all different types. The targets of this stalking identify with different groups. Some of them call themselves targeted individuals. Others call themselves abductees, contactees, or experiencers. Some identify the phenomena with various religious legends. Others explain this phenomena with the theory that we are in a matrix or alternate reality. And there are still others who do not identify with any particular group, but nonetheless are experiencing the same phenomena of bizarre, unexplained events, stalking, and harassment. But just last week, I noticed some similarities between the gang stalkers that targeted individuals talk about and the skinwalkers of ancient Navajo legend. According to Wikipedia, skinwalkers are witches who have the ability to disguise themselves as animals, usually for the purposes of harming people or committing murder. But if they can disguise themselves as animals, then maybe they can also disguise themselves as human. In other words, maybe they are not human to begin with. It says of the legend that skinwalkers are believed to have a secret society and can look like anyone else. They are detectable, it says, in some ways by sometimes having an unusual amount of wealth or smiling too much or twisted mockery. Skinwalkers act as an antagonistic alien force, it says. In other words, they antagonize or try to cause people to become hostile. According to legend, they are rapists and murderers and will even victimize children. But according to this, it is also a mistake to vocalize any fear of them. There's also a video on YouTube that describes the top five signs of a skinwalker encounter. The first sign, it says, is location. The skinwalker legends originate in North America. However, as you'll see, skinwalker is just another name for the same non-human creatures about which there are legends all over the globe. The second sign, according to this video, is stalking. Apparently, the skinwalkers stalk their victims and stay in the shadows while they're doing it. In other words, the skinwalkers are covert stalkers. The third sign is what this video calls sense, sounds, and sensations, which involves scare tactics against their victims. In other words, the skinwalkers terrorize their victims. The fourth sign, apparently, is the attack, which involves the incapacitation of the victim and the perfect mimicking of the victim's voice. And the fifth sign is infiltration, which allegedly involves the killing of the victim and the replacement of the victim. In other words, something like invasion of the body snatchers, where the victim is killed and the skinwalker takes the image of the victim and replaces them in society. Another characteristic of the skinwalkers is their exaggerated mimicking of a victim's movements. So, skinwalkers are shapeshifters, they belong to a secret society, they are alien, they antagonize their victims, they are rapists, they are murderers, you should not speak about your fear of them, they sometimes have an unusual amount of wealth, they sometimes smile too much, they mock their victims, they covertly stalk their victims, they mimic their victims, they terrorize their victims, they can perfectly mimic the voice of their victims, and they can replace their victims in society. There's a ranch near Ballard, Utah, that has been nicknamed Skinwalker Ranch. It has, apparently, many paranormal and UFO-related activities. The ranch borders the Ute Indian Reservation and has been investigated for sightings of UFOs, Bigfoot-like creatures, crop circles, and poltergeist activities. This map here shows the general location of Skinwalker Ranch in northeast Utah and the Navajo Reservation below that in northeast Arizona bordering New Mexico, Colorado, and Utah. 
So although this is the general area that revolves around the Skinwalker legends, these shape-shifting creatures are described all over the world and also has a connection to what some call Bigfoot, which may in reality be the same shape-shifting creature that may be connected to the missing children cases cited in the Missing 411 books authored by David Polites. You'll notice that the map of cases cited by him cover the entire United States, with a huge amount in Texas that he says he has not been able to cite yet because there's so many. And for anyone who thinks there is no substance to these legends, or that this is all legends of ancient people who are simply superstitious, first look at the claims of the former chief of the FBI in Los Angeles, Ted Gunderson, who gave lectures before he died, of a secret widespread network of groups that engage in ritualistic abuse and even human sacrifice. Then look at all the current claims of skinwalker encounters. For example, this person on YouTube who is Navajo has not only seen a skinwalker herself on the Navajo reservation, but is also being stalked in the same ways that I was stalked over 20 years ago in Hollywood, California. And yes, that stalking and harassment has lasted over 20 years. Anyone who has experienced any of this phenomena, or is familiar with any ancient legends of them, will recognize these characteristics right away. These are the same characteristics of the biblical enemy, which we've discussed in other videos, which use an image technology to disguise themselves, a garment that is spotted by their own flesh, who are murderers. They are sometimes called fallen angels, or the Nephilim, or the dragon. It's not clear how long they've been here, but the Bible prophecy tells us that their image technology was finally able to synchronize with the movements of the human mouth in the end time, which is our time now. And that is when they infiltrate en masse, because at that point, which is now, they are able to infiltrate almost unnoticed. The Bible prophecy also says that they fall to earth and mate with humans when humans begin to multiply on the earth, which occurred between 1927 and 1960, and also after the war in the sky, which was World War II, ending in 1945. This is not when they first arrived, it's when they were able to infiltrate unnoticed, and therefore in large numbers. The Bible prophecy tells us this is because this is the time when they were able to synchronize the image with the movements of the human mouth during speech. In other words, they are able to make the image speak, whereas in the past, when they replaced someone, they could not infiltrate society as an imposter of that person because they could not speak as that person. So skinwalkers appear to be fallen ones, which the Bible tells us are Pleiadians. They're not humans, yet they live among us now as if they are human, and they have replaced people who have died in some cases. But what many people don't realize is that these skinwalkers or fallen ones will stalk and terrorize a person before they replace them. And the fear is a very important element to this. There are many movies that have addressed this component. For example, Monsters, Inc., which is made in comedic format to address that these monsters are terrifying people in order to extract a juice that fear produces. In other words, they are extracting neurological chemicals from their victims' brains. This is also explained in the movie Jupiter Ascending, wherein the aliens living on Jupiter have a large supply of juice extracted from human beings that they call louche. Also notice in that scene of the movie about the harvesting of human chemicals, they also talk about a grade of skin, and then we're shown a frame showing what could either be the extracting of something from the skin or, more likely, the creation of fake human skin that is of a grade that is particularly high. In other words, they're creating fake human skin that can pass as real. 
This image described in Bible prophecy, we are told, involves microchips, the mark in Revelation 13, but it also involves, apparently, fake skin. In recent years, it's become a popular pastime for many celebrities who conduct experiments wearing quote-unquote fat suits. However, what they don't tell you is that these skin masks are also used to impersonate people. They make a mold of someone's face or maybe even their whole body, and then they can impersonate that person. In addition, the voice mimicking technology has also been made public, although for some reason the mainstream media won't touch it. It's called voice cloning or voice synthesis, and it can reproduce the voice of a person so well that it is indistinguishable from the real thing. So what we have that is visible and verifiable is the voice tech and the skin tech that can mimic or impersonate someone else convincingly. But what they're not telling you overtly, except covertly in movies and television, is that there is also a microtechnology that works in conjunction with this that makes impersonation or shape shifting possible. So, what we're dealing with here is a secret society of non humans who stalk and antagonize their victims, sometimes with the intention of replacing them by using their image and voice. In other ancient terms, these creatures steal souls, although technically speaking, they don't actually get the soul. It is only the image, the voice, and the behaviors, not the soul. Because again, the Bible says they do not have a soul. And the reason we're told we should not fear them is possibly because they are harvesting the chemicals our brains release when we are terrified. And when listening to the stories of many victims, there are multiple reasons to believe that they are harvesting more than just the fear chemicals. They may also be harvesting endorphins and other chemicals that are released during feelings of love or other emotions. So it makes sense when the Bible prophecy also warns of being provoked by these creatures. We should never engage them in any negative way because that is what they crave. So if you don't want them to harvest from you, then don't produce the chemical that they want. Do not allow yourself to feel fear under any circumstances. Do not give them the chemical that they crave. Deny them that. This demonic attack is very real. I believe it is the true war on terror that the government possibly will never overtly reveal. So if you're being stalked and or persecuted by these creatures, do whatever you can to avoid emotionally reacting and just know that the prophecy tells us that it's almost over for them. For more information on the prophetic timeline, you can view the playlist Bible's Countdown to the Meteorite and Rescue linked here. I also have a playlist of movies and television that deal with this subject, which I will link here as well. I pray you will starve them by holding your peace, and I will talk to you next week.